In this video, we're going to learn how to name carboxylic acids using both the IUPAC system that you're familiar with, as well as a new common uh, naming system. Just keep in mind that the carboxylic acid functional group, when drawn out, it's going to be at the end of a chain or on a ring. You have your R group with the C double bond O, OH, which can also be abbreviated CO2H or COOH. So the system for naming uh, basically follows what we've learned before. Uh, we're going to number the chain so that the carboxylic acid is carbon-1. And then from there, once we generate the parent name, you replace the E ending with oic acid. And that's how we tell the reader that the carboxylic acid is the parent functional group. So let's start uh, just looking at a simple alkane, like pentane. And then if one of the carbons on pentane is a carboxylic acid, so we have the double bond O, OH, what you're changing here is the E to oic acid. So this would be called pentanoic acid. And there's our new ending, and there is a space between uh, the oic and the acid. For numbering, you don't need to include a number for the parent because the carboxylic acid is going to be carbon-1. But if we had other substituents, we would need them in relation to the parent. We would just number out our chain, starting at the carbonyl carbon as one, and number to the end of the chain. This is the IUPAC name. Now there's also a common name for this. I'm just going to redraw it. The common name for this is valeric acid. And when using common nomenclature, we don't use numbers like we do in IUPAC. Instead, we use Greek letters to represent the different places on the chain. And when you're giving this Greek letters, you actually don't give any letter to the carbonyl carbon but the carbon attached to the carbonyl is alpha. Then the next one would be beta, gamma, delta, and so forth. So if you have a substituent at this position, say a methyl group, that would be beta methyl valeric acid, versus if you were using the IUPAC name, it would be 3-methyl pentanoic acid. So that is the common name. Again, just a note for you. We use Greek letters where alpha is the carbon next to the carbonyl. It's not the carbonyl carbon. That's a very common uh, mistake people make is they'll label this as alpha and then um, everything is messed up down the chain. 
Next, let's look at the common names for um, some of the chains for the carboxylic acids. Okay, so look at the common names for the carboxylic acid derivatives. Uh, this is just, we're going to go from carbons 1 through 6, um, and you want to make sure you know these names. And we start with just one carbon. Uh, let me actually draw the structure first. So a carboxylic acid with just one carbon will only have the carbonyl carbon, and I will go ahead and draw in the hydrogen on that carbon. This is called formic acid. Formic acid is commonly known as uh, the acid excreted by fire ants. So then if we go up to two carbons, so now we have the carbonyl carbon and one more carbon. You probably recognize this one. It's quite common. This is acetic acid. Which is just vinegar. Three carbons is called propionic acid. Different than propanoic, which would be the IUPAC name. So there's one carbon, two, three. Four carbons is called butyric acid. four carbon. Five carbons is valeric acid. And then finally, we'll do six carbons is caproic acid. We're not going to go any farther than six carbons. So as far as the Greek letters, you need to know alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and epsilon. Now, to help you remember this, there's a mnemonic you can use. So if we think of the first letter in every name, What you should always keep in mind is that it is a fact that all people better value chemistry. Remember that, and that'll help you remember the names of the six carboxylic acids. So now let's look at some examples and we'll see how uh, we can name carboxylic acid structures using both the IUPAC and common names. When generating a name, there's a couple of guidelines to follow. If you just have one substituent, um, you can use IUPAC or common naming. If you have two or more substituents, you really want to stick with the IUPAC names because uh, the common names and how to um, write out the substituent sometimes gets ambiguous. So let's look at a couple of examples. In this first one, we have, of course, our main carbon chain, which is just four carbons, and we have one substituent, the amino group. So we can actually use IUPAC or common naming for this. Let's do both. So for IUPAC, the carboxylic acid carbon is one, two, three, and four. The amino group is at carbon two. 
So our substituent, we have two amino, and this comes from butane. So we drop the E from butane and we add oic acid. So it's two amino butanoic acid. For the common name, remember you don't give a letter to the carbonyl carbon, but the carbon next to it is alpha, and we have beta and gamma. The amino group is at the alpha position. So we would say alpha amino, and it's not butanoic acid, that's the IUPAC parent. Four carbons for a common name, recall, is butyric acid. Now, in this second example, let's highlight our parent chain. the carboxylic acid carbon. All the way down to this carbon. That's our longest carbon chain. But now we have two substituents. We have the OH group and the methyl group. Two substituents we're going to stick with IUPAC naming. Let's give it numbers. One, two three, four, five. Five carbons comes from pentane. So pentanoic acid is the parent. Now our substituents, we have a hydroxy and a methyl. Okay, so like we've learned before, just alphabetize those. So the hydroxy comes first, do 5-hydroxy, then the M in methyl comes next, 3-methyl, pentanoic acid. Let's look at one example where we have a carboxylic acid on the ring, which makes things a little bit different. Um, our basic rules, we need to pick the carbon of the ring that has the carboxylic acid attached as carbon number one. So that means this carbon right here is carbon one. This is a little different than how we did this with the chains where the carbonyl carbon was one. So now, the carboxylic acid is more of an appendage onto the ring. From there, number in the direction that gives the lowest substituent numbering. So in this case, that would be counterclockwise to put the ethyl group at three. To generate the name, you actually want to name this ring as you would just a substituted hydrocarbon ring. So for example, you know, without thinking about the carboxylic acid, you would just say this is 3-ethyl cyclopentane but then we need to tell the reader that the carboxylic acid is appended to the ring. So to do that, we just add carboxylic acid to the name. And that's the IUPAC name for this ring.